Okay, this short presentation is just looking at some of the issues around um, anti-ligature fixtures and fittings and furniture and particularly in relation to staff understanding what that means and also it's not just the initial installation, it's the long-term maintenance as well. Now you may or may not be aware in relation to the United Kingdom and the safer custody principles, there's certain documentations and information alerts which go out and these are just some examples which for example are issued by jointly from England, um, Wales and Scotland and Northern Ireland which are called Estates and Facilities Alerts and these are all available on the internet and I'm going to go back just as far as 2010 because I'm thinking you know 12 years is long enough to refer back to so if you want to find this online if you just put in Estates and Facilities Alert EFA 2010-003 then you'll find this document but then you'll also there's uh, there's some various updates of, of this as well there's then EFA 2010-009 which is from October of 2010 and after that there's another one which jumps now to 2019 and this is EFA 2019-003 and now we've got the NHS badge on it as well and then as an example the Care Quality Commission brief guide in relation to ligature and anchor points, ligatures and other means of self-harm using fixtures and furniture and this particular example here is version 6 January of 2022 but there's been multiple versions over the years now there's, there's other documents as far back as 2003 up till 2022 and 2023 in relation to fixtures and fittings and ligaturing and some of the things that I want to emphasize is if you've got fixtures and fittings just because it was initially bought and installed as anti-ligature it doesn't mean to say it's still operating as anti-ligature common, common themes are often the the manufacturer or their approved installations have, have come installed the product and then left and then over the years there's been no maintenance contract the the separate organizations maintenance teams have conducted whatever maintenance that they were doing but then that maintenance maintenance people from the estates and facilities teams have had little or no training in relation to ligature risks and have had no approval in relation to the maintenance and servicing of the particular anti-ligature items. So they then are more likely not to fully understand what they're doing and, and with things. Um, who's doing your annual assessments? What's in your policy? Is it an annual assessment? Is it more often than annual or is it longer than annual? You know, have indeed you ever had any conduct in relation to the anti-ligature products? If you're doing weight testing, which you should be doing weight testing, that it's not just vertical weight testing, it should also be at different angles as well because the user weight might differ. If then clinical staff working actually within that environment, do they understand what the weight limit is or what the weight parameters are for activation of the device? Because if you think about some, some service users might have low body um, weight, and therefore they might not activate the device so do they understand what that weight is because then that room for that service user might not be suitable because of the weight limit attached to that piece of furniture or fixture and fittings or it might need additional control measures for that service user um, if the device is actually used so somebody has attempted a ligature in event with it and then it activated correctly who then put it back together? Should it have been put back together? Should it be replaced? Are any parts of the system recommended to be replaced after every activation? Because I think you'll find if you if you look at the um, manufacturer's instructions in relation to the device, if it's been used for real, activated for real, there's usually certain parts of the, the process which either need replaced or checked to see if they need replaced. If that person then is checking them or, or replacing things, are they approved by the manufacturer to do that? And 
have they got sufficient competence to be able to stand in a court of law, for example, and say that they were competent to conduct those checks and understood about the issues around ligaturing? So what's in your workplace policy in relation to the ligature risks for fixtures or fittings? Who's responsible then for your annual or biannual or however often you do the checks? When do you do the checks? You know, do you then have a multi-agency or multi-function um, group who are responsible for conducting the assessments? You might have, for example, a member of, of your staff who go in and do the room audit with a tick sheet of saying, check this, check that. And then they'll look at the item and say, oh, that's one of those anti-ligature products, so it's tick. But do they actually understand? Have they been trained and are they competent to look at the item and be able to say, yes, it's, it's, it's marked as anti-ligature and it's installed and still installed as anti-ligature? Has something been moved? Has it been taken down for decoration? Who then put it back up? Where is your audit trail to say everything that's happened to that item? And if something happened now and any investigation then looked at that item and said, this has been activated previously, Where's all your records to show for each activation, what happened, who conducted the checks of the item and who decided it goes back into use, who then put it back into use, who then conducted the checks prior to it being left again. So there's more to anti-ligature furniture fixtures and fittings than just buying something that's got the tag. And also, just because something's got the tag of anti-ligature or, or, you know, Reduced ligature doesn't mean to say that a ligaturing event cannot happen in relation to that item. So that's just a very brief outline in relation to some issues around ligature fixtures and fittings. What's in your policy about it? Who's installing these things? If, if you know, hopefully it's the manufacturer or approved contractor who's installing but then who's conducting all of the required tests thereafter and audits thereafter what's in your policy in relation to what should happen after any activation in relation to any need for maintenance of, of anything in the room or changes of service users any questions i'm happy to receive an email um, Subscribe and like our channel and you'll receive more little videos in relation to topics that we cover. Thank you very much.